Hello and welcome back to my coverage of the 2023 Tour Divide. Now I'm doing daily updates, if you've not seen those, check out my channel um, and give it a subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on the daily reportage, following the dots, digging into some of the social media um, and some some messages from some, from the, some of the forerunners um, as we follow them down the Great Divide, currently about eight days in. Uh, but for this this little video, I thought I'd dive into some of the bikes that these guys are using, and also just try and work out, you know, what is the best bike to use for the Tour Divide. So without further ado, let's have a look at some bikes. So this is from Ulrich Bartholomew, is currently in the lead group. Um, he's been bouncing around sort of between first and third. Currently, we have three riders very close together. Now he's riding a BMC Carbon Hardtail. I'm not quite sure of the model. Um, running the the suspension fork on there, the RockShox RockShox Sid. Now, I, to be honest, I think running suspension is the way forward on Tour Divide. Having done it twice, ridden it suspension and without, it just saves energy over time. Um, and modern forks, they're pretty reliable, so they're going to go the distance. That might not have been the case ten years ago, but I think things have moved on quite a lot now. Um, let me just move my face out of the way and have a look at the drivetrain so it looks like we're running SRAM axis so always opted for drop bars on on his mountain bike um, now I think he's more familiar with with riding drop bars um, coming from a road background so it's probably more comfortable for him gives you loads of hand positions and he's gone for the DI2 shifters uh, sorry the axis shifters pair them with a the rear mech it looks like he's running this oversize pulley system um, he's got a Kogel sticker on there, so I imagine it's a Kogel oversized pulley system. I mean, if you've been watching the live daily coverage, you would have seen they've just hit the mud in the Great Basin and the conditions have been awful. Um, I'm not sure whether having an oversized pulley system is really any benefit, but I would be very interested to see how that's fared uh, in that mud. Um, is it going to go the distance uh, or is it going to wear prematurely? Um, I don't know. That's That's one thing that we'll find out afterwards, I guess. Uh, wheels and tyres, I think he's running Beast Components wheels, not quite sure on the hubs. Um, he's got a Dynamo front hub, so it's probably a Son or a, something like that on the front. I think he's got Supernova lights, so Supernova Dynamo front light and the little rear light here. Um, and tyre-wise, he's got a Hutchison tyre pan up front. I've, I've used these, they're alright, I've used them on a mountain bike. Fairly fast rolling and nice and grippy. I would be a little bit skeptical about this rear tire selection though. He's running the the Hutchinson Skeleton. Now this is um, this is a super fast XC tire, um, really fast rolling, low rolling resistance. There's just not an awful lot of rubber on there, so I would question whether it's going to go the distance. Um, once you get sort of out of Colorado into New Mexico, there's quite a lot of tarmac. It can get really warm, and that can really degrade tires quite quickly. So he may have to consider changing that um, and if if the rubber gets too thin then he might find he gets a few punches um, so yeah something to consider for Ulrich looks like he's running the Apertura bags minimal kit packing light um, he's riding fast so it's obviously working for him next up another one of the front runners um, Justina Slavica again he's got quite a similar setup to Ulrich so he's running the Trek um, Hartel. I think it's the one with the little ISO decoupler in the back, so it takes a little bit of buzz out. Uh, again, Sid Fork. Um, he's running the Victorian Mezcal tyres. Now they're they're pretty much considered a um, uh, like a go-to for the divide. They, they they definitely last the distance and they're relatively fast rolling. Um, so quite a few people do tend to use those. Again, on SRAM axis, very similar setup to Ulrich. However, he did have issues. Um, his battery stopped charging and pretty much died, which which caused him to lose six hours as he, as he had to go off course and buy new batteries. Um, he's running Hunt wheels. He's running a Hunt custom um, carbon Dynamo wheel set, um, and that, that's running his his light on there. He's got the aero bars. I noted Auric didn't have the aero bars. Whether that makes a difference or not, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, seems to be working for Justinas. He's still up there. And bag-wise, he is on the custom tail fin bags. So he's got custom tail fin frame bag, long top dew pack, and then the little aero pack at the back there. Um, and looks like um, he's relying on his hydration vest for carrying water. So yeah, that's a nice, neat setup there from Eustinus. Um While we're, we're talking through this, um, 
check out bikepacking.com they've got loads and loads of bikes from all the races um they've got drop bar bikes they've got flat bar bikes um so yeah loads of details in there if if you wanted to really dig into it and um check out more of them I've, i'm only touching on a few bikes in this because there's there's so many to to cover um but yeah check out bikepacking.com for a, a more of a lowdown on to Leo Wilcox's bike. Now she's, I think this will be her fifth time down the divide. So she kind of knows, you know, what she likes. Um, again, very similar setup to Justinus and Ulrich. Um, if I just move my face out of the way, you see she's on the SRAM. She's on the SRAM axis again. Um, so wireless, um, looks like she's got stock stock SRAM on there. No, no additional stuff. They uh, might be the zip wheels. I imagine if she's sponsored by SRAM, she'll be on zip. Um, so yeah nice and light got the SID fork on there running a dynamo you can see the cable wrap around the fork there um, could be neater but there we go we're not we're not going to uh, give her too much grief about that um, and then revelate packs again full frame full frame pack I think Lael runs oh you see a bottle here I don't know whether she runs a bladder as well but she's got a bottle in her feed pack gone for the aero bars um, it looks like an ergon saddle and then the tires she runs um oh, well actually she's she's she works very closely with Renners. um so she's running the fleece ridge tires now these are 50 mil and that's about uh, sorry 55 millimeter wide so that's that's about two inch you don't necessarily need much wider for tour divide um but they're really they're really i i, I mean i use them myself i'm being slightly biased here but they're really supple fast rolling um they're more like a massive gravel tire so the tour divide there's not much in the way of like proper mountain biking so you can get away with like a big gravel tire and it's probably one of the faster options so Renners, uh fleecer ridge lales helped develop them um i've run these myself in tour divide they're pretty expensive to buy but you definitely get what you pay for they they last at distance um i did i used a set for tour divide last year only i only got halfway um but the, those tires are still on my bike i've done it at this mountain race on them as well they just last really well um just a high quality rubber um so yeah so that's leo's bike she's also leo has also got a um if we go back we've got she's got a video up on youtube packing for the tour divide so that's definitely worth a look if you're interested in what leo has been using um so yeah Moving on, Alexandra Huchin. She's running single speed, current women's single speed single speed record holder. Gear ratio, I think I read it was a 34-17. Um, the wet conditions, I think, have played havoc with her a little bit. It's, it's kind of slowed her down a little bit on the, uh, just it's been quite hard gear to pedal. Um, but yeah, Chumba Titanium Frame. I think they're the Cane Creek forks. She's got Cane Creek cranks on there. Um, and again, relatively light pack, um, full frame pack. So I assume she's running a hydration pack as well for a water. Um, small front bar pack. Looks like she's got little aero bars on there. Ergon grips, they're quite popular. Um, can't make out that saddle. Is it a Terry women's specific saddle? Quite possibly. Not sure if she's running a dynamo or not. Can't see, see one. Um, I'm not quite sure on the wheels either. Maybe the Industry 9 with the colored spokes at the back. Um, and yeah, running the Maxxis Crossmark tyres. I mean, these these tyres have been around for years and years and years. I used them when I was a junior racer. Um, that was quite a while ago now. Uh, as part of 20, well, 15, 20 years ago. Um, kind of fast rolling, a bit of tread on them. Um, so yeah, that is Alexandra's tyre of choice. On to another rider who's been mixing up at the front. Not quite in the front pack, but kind of yo-yoing. Um, between sort of fourth and sort of sixth, seventh, um, quite a strong, consistent ride. Chris Burkhart. Um, I don't actually know what that frame is, um, but he's running fully rigid. Uh, he's he's on what are those stands rims? Quite, can't quite make it out, but he's running the the Schwalbe tires, uh, racing rays by the looks of it. Fairly fast rolling. Um, Again, hopefully they're durable enough to make it down the divide. Um, Schwalbe, I mean, they, they're great tyres, but they, they, they do tend to wear quickly sometimes. Um, so hopefully he'll be okay on those. He's again running a mix of luggage. So hydration vest seems to be a very popular option nowadays. Full frame pack, looks like Revelate. And then he's running some of the, the custom tail fin stuff. So he's got a top tube bag 
and the aero pack um, and it looks like he might be running a suspension seat post in there as well might be the cane creek thud buster um, and if you look carefully he's managed to get his hands on the brand new SRAM group set uh, is that the xx one it looks like or xo 12 speed kind of got the direct mount derailleur on there it's supposed to be really durable and um, you know that's exactly what you want on the tour divide again flat bars rather than drop bars uh, but he has got the aero set up Am I a flat bar or drop bar guy? Well, I've ridden it on drop bars, but probably, I think if you've got a tight aero set up with your bars there, um, you're not gonna lose anything by riding flat bars. So that is Chris's setup. Um, another guy being right up there, Joe Nation, former enduro racer, running Santa Cruz, um, hardtail he's got an interesting setup with the bottles it looks like he's got three bottles on there with a little adapter to put it either side might be tools in his little canister in the middle there um but yeah dt swiss wheels can't quite make out whether it's a dynamo or not um and yeah kind of got his interestingly he's got his bar bag mounted forwards a little bit less than the old aerodynamic drag not much in the rear um so yeah, he's, he's actually packing fairly light there. Um, and he's on the Maxxis Aspen. Again, fast rolling tire, not sure on the durability um, longer term. There's not an awful lot of rubber on them, but I'm sure he's done his testing and due diligence with that. So I'm sure he knows what he's doing. He's running pretty fast, so he's doing something right. And again, he's on the SRAM group set. Seems to be a lot of SRAM around at the moment. Looks like Axis, again, really great. Um, generally seems to work quite well although we as i said we have seen a few reliability issues in the race and um he has also got full kit breakdown on his youtube channel so um you know definitely worth going over having a little look at that if that's the kind of thing you are interested in another cool bike uh merton he's just found his way slowly into the the top 10 in the last few days so he's done quite a consistent ride um a bike brand close to my heart they support me mason cycles this is their in search of steel hardtail um designed around the drop bar um got this cool rigid fork loads of mountain points and this integrated mud guard which i'm sure i'll be very grateful for now he's into the mud um but it's also structural so you see he's got his, his front dry bag mounted on the front fender so he doesn't have to put anything on the bars looks like he's got a mix he's got an xt let's move my my face out of the way um he's got a mix there so an xt um chain set from shimano and a shram axis um rear mech with the the like the drop bar shifters on there it looks like a richie venture max var bar on there that's that's what i use really nice ergo drop on them and then it's like full full um apertura on the bags um and if you can see here he's got his hydration pack or his hydration bladder in his frame bag and connects it up the top. Some people like to do that. It's not a personal favorite of mine because you can never see quite how much you're drinking and um, it's not so easy to clean and fill the, fill the, the bladder. I'm, I'm a bottle kind of guy, um, but I've got quite a large frame on my bike, so it's easier for me to um, fit everything in there. Another guy who he was he was fairly fast at the, at the front there, um, but has now unfortunately pulled out. He he just had some medical issues, um, so it wasn't really safe for him to carry on. Ted King again, he's he's got the uh, the mountain bike. What's the Cannondale? I don't know what the, the the models are now. Zip wheels running. He looks like he's got a Dynamo hub in there again, running the the Renault's Fleecer Ridge tire. Um, I might be a little bit biased, but I I do think they're the fastest option. Um, on the tour divide given the terrain he looks like he's managed to get his hands on the brand new shram stuff so that's xx you can see it's 12 speed direct mount on their axis shifters um super nice super expensive it's meant to be really durable so again pretty good for the tour divide he's gone for a full frame pack can't see whether he's got his bladder running in there or whether he's got a separate pack and then he's gone light on the bar bag and the saddle pack um and then the long top due back ergon grips on there really quite useful on the climbs just to get a different hand position um you can see he's, he has got a sine wave light on there so he's running a dynamo front hub sid fork again and he's got uh, bottles mounted on the fork there um so yeah 
frees up a bit of space in the frame it means you don't have to run a pack and running the zip aero bars again i think an aero position is is pretty useful there are some faster sections on the tour divide so it is good to get aero if you can but also it just gives your hands a little bit of a rest which is important over the long haul right one of the last bikes on this year's tour divide it's a bit of a fan favorite mirror the dog and john who is her chauffeur it looks like so he's got this really cool rig um i think it's known as a midtail so it's not like a full cargo bike it's not a full-length cargo bike but it's just slightly elongated behind the bottom bracket here a slightly longer wheelbase so you can get a bit more stuff on the back and this is mirror's little uh, cockpit up here um looks like just a, a standard storage crate that's been fixed onto this this sort of direct mount rack which is really cool um interestingly as well i'll, I'll get myself out of the way um, the drivetrain is, is running a pinion gearbox. So for those of you who don't know, the basically it's the, the gears are all housed within this gearbox in the bottom bracket and then it's just a single, um, in this case, belt drive or chain to the rear wheel. So the belt drive, I'm sure, is going to be really good on the, on the Tour Divide. Um, I think it's gates that make them. But essentially, they don't need much in the way of maintenance. There's not loads of links like there are on a chain and rollers. And it just means that you don't have to lube it you can just brush it down and it should be a lot more reliable in the long term downside if you do snap a belt it is trickier to to replace um but i'm sure uh, a spare belt is is probably a spare you would you would definitely pack um if you were doing something like this wheels i guess there's a bit of extra weight on there they look like they're pretty sturdy can't quite make out exactly what they are but he's running the maxis they icon tires um pretty well proven um so yeah i guess with a bit of extra weight on there you probably need a bit more grip and then a mix of of bags on there a bit of Re revelate porcelain rocket um and then the big canteens well i say zip tied wild strapped onto the on the fork there um and you can see he's got a cane key cane creek it looks like a thud buster c post just takes a, a few of the bumps out and makes things a little bit more comfortable when you're doing these long durations so yeah that's a really nice setup really cool really quirky and quite a nice story as well uh, now i thought um they're they're bikes that have been used in this year's tour divide um i thought i just uh, in my race coverage, I've, I've touched on um, my experiences and shown some of the videos from 2019. I've actually done the Tour Divide, uh, well, one and a half times. 2019, I've finished it. Um, last year, I wasn't able to finish, um, just got ill, but I just thought I'd show you what I used um, and then just do a few comparison notes um, as to what I'd improve for next time. So the first time I did it, 2019, I had this Mason insert of frame, steel frame, rigid bike, the structural fender we talked about on Merton's bike uh, force one by um, just mechanical I didn't have I didn't have access at all I think around 36 tooth chain ring um, like a bit of a bigger gear to push against um, I had these these mis misgrape bags so um, a custom frame bag top tube bag and a saddle pack and then my bottles on the fork now to be honest I wouldn't run bottles on the fork again they were a bit of a pain they rattled a lot and I eventually snapped one of the, the bottle cages I think it's just metal fatigue over time but I did find the fender really useful I could take some extra water on there um, when I was in the warmer climates and I had these custom hunt wheels I think these are the gravel x wide rim laced onto a mountain bike rear hub and a son dynamo so i had my power um and my light you know i could charge stuff had my light on there the little little rear light running off the dynamo so i was, I was fully self-sufficient uh, i ran these maxis uh, sorry maxis wtb nano tires again i think they were designed for for the divide way back or certainly repurposed for the divide and they worked fine for me fairly fast rolling nearly wore the rear tire out but they just got, just about got me through and i didn't have a puncture so i guess that's a good sign um so yeah so but then when i came came back in 2019 i made a few changes um so as you can see same frame um let me get that up again same frame um although i fitted a sid suspension fork rock rock shocks rock shocks sid again i just decided that although it's a little bit heavier the comfort would be better in the long run and also i got rid of the um the bottles on the fork slightly smaller frame pack 
um, but I could get two liters of water in there. So it just tidies things up, slightly more aerodynamic, help you through the um, the faster sections. Swap to SRAM, uh, from SRAM to Shimano, I've got DI2. Um, so I actually ran the GRX DI2 shifters and paired them with an old, like they, they don't make it anymore, but um, an XGR DI2 11 speed um, rear mech. Basically I preferred the electronic shifting because it, it just is a bit easier on your fingers. Uh, I've got no qualms running DI2 on the Tour Divide. It's always been super reliable for me um, and it worked really well better than my body did. Um, wheels, I use slightly different ones. Again, a similar kind of custom build, but I use the Limitless gravel rims. Um, and Renner's Fleece Ridge tires performed, performed excellently. Um, they're still on my bike now. They just keep lasting forever. So they're excellent. Um, and then I'm running tail fin stuff. So the custom bag there and the, um, the top two bags as well. Uh, also running the the, the aero pack at the back there so that gave me a bit of extra volume um, and my thoughts were if I needed to carry extra water through the basin and in New Mexico I could just put a bottle under the straps at the top here um, yeah and it works works pretty well um, like I said my body gave out on me had a chest infection from the start and it just caught up with me but yeah no qualms with running that on the bike only thing I might change, I might put a suspension seat post in or certainly a narrower diameter seat post just to take a bit of the trail bars out. Um, something like the Redshift, which I've used since then. If I was going to go back again, would I use this bike? Um, I think I'd probably ditch the drop bars now. Um, I use, I'd use a lot of the same principles. Working on a new frame with Mason, more of a mountain bike frame, hopefully slightly lighter in aluminium. I'd probably run flat bars with the Ergon bar ends and uh, a nice tight aero position um, and the rest of it I'd probably keep very similar um, if I was go back to go back again. Now in my coverage we've been talking about Mike Cool. Um, we've been chasing, the, the rider's been chasing his dot, he still holds a record so I thought it'd be fitting just to sign off this video um, just to look at the bike he used in 2016 when he set that incredible record. Um, so pivot, carbon hardtail. I think he had a carbon fork. I think it was a Kinesis fork. Reynolds wheels. He used to love these uh, Continental Race Kings. They seem to, to last the, the distance fairly fast and they, you get really good punch protection. And you'll notice that, you know, Mike, Mike, not as tall as me, so he didn't have quite so much room in his frame bag, but he used to run like super light. Um, so he used to put his water in there, two liters, um, running Shimano XTR DI2. So actually this is the, the mech I used on, on my build last year. Um, so the 11 speed version, minimal pack. I think he had a sleep kit in the front, um, layers in the back, and then tools and accessories on these two top bags there and some feed bags. Um, Dynamo front hub um, with, is running a exposure Revo. Um, and you notice he's not really got proper aero bars, just kind of little bar ends in the middle. So it's like a bit of a mini setup, a bit of a compromise. I think Mike was all about weight and saving it as where he could. Um, and it worked for him. So yeah, that's the bike that Michael used when he set the Tour Divide record. So that's it for my bikes of the Tour Divide roundup. Um, hopefully some interesting stuff there. Um, don't forget to keep on looking at my daily updates. We're on day eight now, I'm getting to the end of the race. We should have a winner in the next five or six days. And yeah, it's exciting stuff. So see you over on the daily updates.